Now discuss about the anatomy of radius. This is an anterior view of the radius. This is posterior view of the radius. This is anterior view, this is posterior view of the radius. Radius has upper end, lower end and is soft. Features of the upper end, upper end has head. Head is disc like. Upper end has head. This is disc like. Then there is neck. Then there is tuberosity. This is tuberosity, this is radial tuberosity. Anterior part is smooth and posterior part is rough. So this is head, here is neck and the radial tuberosity. This features the upper end. Now lower end. If you see the lower end, it is like this. It has five surfaces. This anterior surface is prominent. This surface, radial artery can be palpate or radial artery is palpated here. It lies anterior to this. Radial artery lies anterior to this here. So radial artery palpate against the radius. So this is radial artery. So this is anterior surface and here is medial surface. This is medial surface. This surface forms the here and here. It forms the ulnar notch. This is ulnar notch. This is ulnar notch. And this is posterior surface from here to here. This is posterior surface. And in posterior surface, one tubercle is present. This tubercle is dorsal tubercle of the Lister. This is dorsal This is dorsal tubercle of Lister. Here. And in posterior surface, there are four groups for the for extent for the extensor tendons here is one group this is first this is second group this is third group this is fourth group so four groups are present here and the posterior surface so these are groups this is lister tubercle so first second third fourth groups on the posterior surface. This lateral part, this lateral surface, this lateral surface, it projects downward and forms the styloid process. This is the styloid process. process. And this inferior surface, this is inferior surface, this inferior surface articulates with Iscaphoid and lunate bones and form the wrist joint. So this is lower end and from here to here this is shaft. This shaft is if you cut a section you will find like this. It has anterior border, posterior border and interosseous border.
So this is anterior border and its mirror image is posterior border. This is posterior border. Here is rough part of radial tuberous. This is posterior border. So anterior border, upper part is oblique, known as anterior oblique line. This is anterior oblique line. Posterior parts from posterior oblique line. Now, surfaces. This surface from here to here, this and this surface, anterior surface here, foramen is present. This is known as nutrient foramen. Direction of the foramen is upward and through this nutrient branch of anterior interosseous artery passes. This is nutrient branch of anterior interosseous artery. It passes through this nutrient foramen and going into this bone is lower end. So this is present on the anterior surface, this is lateral surface and this is posterior surface. So it has three surfaces and three borders. So this is all about the features of the radius. Thank you. Now side determination of the radius. Radius can be easily, side can be easily determined by keeping in the mind the position of the head. Head is directed upward and it's, it is disc length. And another thing that is stellate process which is projection on the lower end. So this is upper end, this is lower end which has a projection known as stellate process and also near the upper end there is in the upper end there is also radial tuberosity which is lies medially and another important thing in the lower end there is dorsal tuber pit of the listum which lies on the posterior surface of the lower end and another important thing this is sharpest border sharpest border is the interosseous border or medial border so keeping mind in four points you can easily determine the side of the radius thank you now discuss about the attachment on the radius first of all discuss about the insertion of the muscles the muscles inserted here this muscle this is biceps brachii This is biceps brachii. It attaches on the posterior part of this. If you put a section, transverse section at this level, you will find this is radial tuberosity. This is radius. So posterior part is rough. This part is rough. And this in this part, the muscle is attached. So this is biceps brachii, which attaches on the posterior rough part of the radial tuberosity. And then anteriorly, in a smooth part, there is a bursa lies here. So this is insertion of the biceps of the on the radial tuberosity, posterior part of the radial tuberosity. And the thing is insertion of the supinator muscle. This is supinator muscle inserted here. This is supinator. This is supinator muscle. And the muscle is here. This is pronator teres. This muscle is pronator teres. Pronator teres. And the muscle is here. This is pronator quadratus. This 
This is twenty hundred fat liters. And the muscle here is brachioradialis. This is brachioradialis. So here you can see this is one, two, three, four, five. There are insertion of the five muscles. Five muscles are inserted in the radius. Now muscle takes origin from the radius. Here, anterior oblique line. Here, flexor digitorum superficialis muscle takes origin from here. Flexor digitorum superficialis from anterior oblique line. Another muscle. Flexor pulsus longus. Flexor pulsus longus. Takes origin here. Flexor pulsus longus takes origin. Another muscle. And the posterior aspect. This is adductor pulsus longus. And this is extensor pulsus brevis. So this adductor pulsus longus and extensor pulsus brevis, tendon of both these passes through first groove. This is first groove here, adductor pulsus longus and extensor pulsus brevis tendon passes. And then in second group, there is extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis tendon passes. Here is here, here extensor pulsus longus tendon is possible. So third, this is oblique group. This group is known as oblique group. And in fourth group, here there is extensor, extensor digitorum, extensor indices, and posterior introsius nerve and anterior introsius artery. So these four structures passes through this group. So these structures, these are muscles. Attach on the on the radius. You have seen there are five muscles which are inserted, and there are four muscles: flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor uh, flexor pulsus longus, and adductor pulsus longus, extensor pulsus brevis. These are four muscles which takes origin. So origin of four muscles. And here you have seen the tendons which are related with the tendons and other structures which are related with the groups present on the lower end of the dorsal aspect of the radius. So thank you. Now discuss about the attachment of the ligaments. Here. Here is position of this is position of ulna. This is ulna. Here is attachment of the structures. Here is ulnar ligament which attaches with the radial notch of the ulna. Here. So it encircles the head. If you got a section here, you will find the head is like this. And this ulnar ligament encircles like this. And here pivot joint is formed, pivot joint. This is superior radio ulnar joint. And another thing, 
here one articular surface is here here capitulum of humerus articulates here this is annular ligament this ligament is annular ligament and the ligament here this is quadrate ligament attach jam ne here this is oblique oblique card here is position of Introsseous membrane. This is introsseous membrane. It connects the introsseous border of the radius with the ulna. This is introsseous border through which introsseous membrane is attached. And here, the articular disc is present. This is fibrocartilage. articular disc and here is position of attachment of the here is capsular joint capsule and here is position of attachment of the capsular ligament here is position of the attachment of the capsular ligament along the margin of the distal end of the radius so these are the attachment of the ligaments thank you yes now ossifications it has one primary center of ossification and two secondary center this primary center appears in the shaft during eighth week of the intrauterine life and secondary center for the lower end appears during first year appears during first year and fuse with the sac during 20th year and for the upper end the secondary center appears during the fourth year and fuse during 18th year of the life so this is all about the ossifications now applied aspect this bone usually fractures at the distal end about proximal to 2 cm proximal to distal end process about 2 cm proximal to distal end process like here so this this is most common fracture of the radius when patient falls on the out straight hind usually old ladies if this fragment distal fragment this displaced backward or posteriorly then this, this is known as pulley fracture if this fragment moves or displaces anteriorly then this is known as smith fracture so there are two fractures pulley fracture and smith fracture fracture is at the same side but displacement of the distal fragment this fragment displaced posteriorly then it become pulley fracture it displaced anteriorly then it become split fracture so this is all about the ossifications and applied anatomy of the radius thank you